Welcome back to Power and Politics as we track the fallout from Canada's decision to close down its embassy in Iran. Iran's charge d'affaires to Canada is calling the move hostile. Power and Politics, though, has learned that more tough actions by Canada could be coming, including sanctions on the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. What will the consequences of these moves be? What is the best way to deal with Iran? We just talked to the Minister of Public Safety, Vic Davis. He didn't confirm that they were doing it, but he certainly made as strong hints as we've ever heard that these new levels of sanctions will come. Let's get some perspective from Washington. The Executive Director of the Defense of Democracies, uh, Mark Dubitz, long called for these sanctions. And in Toronto, the Director of the Monk School of Global Affairs, Janice Stein. And Janice, let me start with you. Uh, how do we read what's happened between Canada and Iran? Everyone's trying to figure out what's happening here, what's motivated this, and how much further Canada can go. Um, it's pretty clear, Evan, that this is driven actually by the September 13th deadline when we are going to list Iraq, Iran rather, as a state sponsor of terrorism under the victims um, of, of terrorism legislation. Once you understand that, w the government then worked back from that, wanted our people out. Uh, and they've been working for months on this. Uh, so the announcement really does not signify imminent war or anything like that. But they then took ask, one extra... Uh, there, just so people understand, there's new legislation passed uh, in 2012, I think March 2012. It's called the Justice for Victims of Terrorism. Yes. That is different than listing the yes, Iranian Republican Guard Corps as a terrorist group. Just Those distinguish them. Those are two separate acts entirely. Uh, I mean, what Minister Baird said last week uh, in Russia is that they will be listing Iran under the victims uh, of terror legislation. So that's certain. As you just said, the case just hinted very strongly uh, that uh, they will, in fact, list the Revolutionary Guards uh, as a terrorist organization. And the third thing they did, which was close down uh, and expel uh, the Iranian staff working in Ottawa, uh, there had been real concerns about what Iranian diplomats were doing, not only in Ottawa, but across North America. What they did not do, just for the record, they did not break diplomatic relations. And that did, before I get to Mark, that's very important here. Uh, countries talk on all sorts of levels. We didn't have an ambassador there, we had a charge d'affaires, they had a charge d'affaires here, but we, we still don't have broken, we haven't cut off diplomatic That's relations. Right. We've, we've shut down embassies. That's correct. And we've shut down, we've closed embassies in both capitals. We have not broken diplomatic relations. All right. Uh, how do you, Mark Dubowitz, interpret not only Canada's, what may be behind Canada's hard line, but what may else, what, what else may be coming down the pipeline? Well, I, I think Canada is doing exactly what Janice suggested, which is getting Canadian diplomats out of harm's way because the Canadians are going to be moving forcefully, not only against Iran as a state sponsor of terrorism, but more importantly, going to be listing the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps under the criminal code as a terrorist organization. And that's a critical step because the Revolutionary Guards is a deadly terrorist organization. It's as deadly as Al-Qaeda. It's responsible for Iran's nuclear weapons program, its vast system of domestic repression, and its overseas terrorist activities, including the repression of the Syrian people. So this is calling a spade a spade. This is a deadly terrorist organization. It deserves to be listed. It should have been listed uh, years ago. And I'm pleased to see the Canadian government finally responding forcefully in, uh, in going after the Revolutionary Guards. What would the consequences be there if indeed there is that next step? And I know you've urged it. A lot of people say, you know, why should Canada join the U.S., which did this back in 2007, but then no other country has taken this step. Does that escalate tensions and maybe safety concerns if Canada does indeed follow through with this IRGC? Well, I think it would have escalated safety concerns for Canadian diplomats in Iran, and I think the government was right to make that decision to to shut down the embassy. But I think it's an important step, both symbolically and substantively. The Revolutionary Guards control Iran today. They control Iran's regime. They are responsible, as I said, for the nuclear program, for terrorist activities, but also substantively. Now, if anybody is found associating with the Revolutionary Guards in Canada, they can be charged and, and convicted under the criminal code. That's very important because there are Revolutionary Guard agents and intelligence agents using Canada to procure parts and components for the nuclear program, to run intelligence operations, and to monitor Iranian dissidents in Canada. You do business with the Revolutionary Guards now, and you will find yourself in prison. That's an important step. Uh, Janice, let's step back a minute. We get a lot of pushback on Twitter, on our social media, saying, 
you know, we appreciate that the Iranian government um, is uh, very active in places like Syria. There's not a lot of sympathy for their, their activities, for the kind of dreadful statements you've heard from Ahmadinejad. But they also say, what is the specific threat to Canada? Should Canadians know there's a specific threat to elevate the level to, you know, the, the controversy or the confrontation to this level? And remember, there's elections in Iran. Ahmadinejad is going to be replaced in a year. So should Canada have a, a view on the ground? What does this tell us about our, our, a shift in Canadian policy? Well, I, I think there are two important things to remember here, uh, Evan. One, Canada has been among the most forthcoming in opposition to the Iranian nuclear program. Uh, and also there have been uh, acts of terror committed against civilians outside Iran uh, in different capitals. And it's that that I think is going to lead to the listing of the Revolutionary Guards. As soon as Canada does that, uh, its diplomats obviously became a target, but as you quite rightly said, uh, it can become a target in other ways. So I think there are issues now between Canada and Iran. So the bigger question is, uh, what's the strategy? Does it make sense to take a firm stand against Iran now? And there is a strong argument that as this crisis deepens, uh, as time begins to move on the nuclear clock, signaling intentions very clearly and firmly at this point is actually a good strategy. We had no contact. Our diplomats were not effective on the ground in Tehran. I mean, they were totally shut out. So to argue that we're losing a listening post, I don't think the sacrifice was very good because we were not able to have really you sustained uh, contact the with the Iranian government. The argument is that the Americans had no eyes and ears on the ground there. Obviously, they don't have an embassy. So the Canadian embassy was actually a base for Brits, for uh, the U.S., that it was a useful place to be uh, and that it, it did serve a function on a lot of levels. Mark Dewey Woods. Yeah, I, Evan, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I've heard that argument over the years. And when you speak to officials in, in Washington, you know, over the years, the intelligence value of the Canadian embassy diminished considerably. And I think Janice is right. I mean, I don't think there was a strong argument to have the embassy anymore from an intel collection point of view and certainly from a diplomatic point of view. I mean, I don't think there's anything more to talk to the Iranians about. I think Canada should break diplomatic ties with Iran immediately. And I think it should make it very clear this is a pariah nation and a pariah regime. And as long as it, it doesn't uphold its responsibilities under international law, Canada has nothing to talk to this Iranian regime about. Uh, I got a 30 seconds, Janison. What about the Iranian community here? There is, it's a very serious community. Now what? No, this is a real problem for the, for the Iranian community. Many Iranians went back and forth to Tehran to visit families. Now to get a visa, the temporary arrangements are that you have to apply through the Canadian embassy in Ankara Enjoy. instead of directly. Uh, there's no doubt that there will be significant difficulties for the Iranian community in Canada, and it's the second largest diaspora outside the United States that wants to visit family at home. Yeah, Evan, those, are, those are minor inconveniences that are weighed against the overwhelming responsibility of Canada to call this nation a pariah nation and uphold this international responsibilities. There's a huge Iranian community in America. They've managed to uh, deal with the inconveniences, and I think most Iranian Americans and Canadians agree this was the right step. All right, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, Mark Dubitz, uh, Janice Stein, uh, what's the next step? Will the IRDC, is it imminent that they'll be named a terrorist organization? We I know the Justice for Victims of Terror, September 13th, we expect that to happen. Uh, we'll have you both back to continue this, uh, the fallout of this. Uh,